So, I want to do a, uh, a video on Bible prophecy because I'm seeing a lot of stuff out there that uh, just quite frankly is false, a lot of speculation, people are, people make up a lot of things and, and I'm sure m many of them are sincere but they haven't spent a whole lot of time studying their Bible, they got different sources, just a lot of conspiracy theories mixed in there with it. Just a whole lot of falsehood. Uh, this is mainly, mainly sparked today because I was reading something online where somebody went up into a lengthy speech and a whole pile of Hebrew wording and wordplay and, and stuff like this where they were um, basically they, in a roundabout lengthy way they, they named uh, Barack Obama as some kind of antichrist or the antichrist or whatever. Uh, it was it was nonsense, honestly. He's not the Antichrist, and I can show you why. And I can show you who the Bible says is the Antichrist instead of uh, some person. But before you you understand any of this stuff, though, like who you have to understand first. It's important to understand who is Israel that the Bible talks about. Who is Israel? Is it the Jews? Is it a little nation over there? Or, or who is Israel? Uh, also, you need to understand who is this beast? Beast power. The Bible call, talks about. Uh, I've heard everything. I've heard people say, I've also heard people call Obama the beast. I've heard people call the United States the beast. I've heard people say the Muslims are the beast. You know, it's just, you know, all of them can't be right. And a lot of speculation, a whole lot of guesswork and not a lot of Bible study going on. You really need to study your Bible. And I'm not, by the way, parroting somebody else's. I was recently accused of being a parrot, just repeating something I've already heard from somebody else. Very insulting, very insulting. I spent a lot of time, I spend a lot of my free time studying the Bible, so, you know. I, I listen to various sources, I do listen to other people, I consider their opinion, but in the end I do what my Bible instructs me to do and I prove all things. Open up your Bible, prove it yourself. Don't believe what I say, research it in your Bible, in your Bible, on your own. It's all in here. There's nothing else you need. You don't need to look up conspiracy theorists. You don't need any other garbage. All you need is your Bible. God tells you, and you don't need anybody else telling you what it means. God says you can look it up in your Bible and you can understand it. So you don't need a Hebrew scholar from Israel to tell you what it, what it means. You know, And most of them there don't believe the New Testament's even valid anyhow. So I don't know why you'd even want to go there to ask them anything. But that's neither here nor there. First off, if you look in uh, if you look in Second uh, Chronicles 18:3, and I got a paper here, I got some notes on, so if, excuse me if I look away here. Um, actually, I think I'll throw my specs on here. I gotta wear glasses thanks to diabetes. Hopefully, I'll cure that sometime soon. In Second Chronicles 18:3, it names the king of Israel, and it names the king of Judah. Um, let that sink in for a minute. It names two kings. One is the king of Israel. The other one is the king of Judah, the Jews. You see, Israel is not the Jews. The Jews are not Israel. They're two separate nations totally. And a matter of fact, they even went to war against each other a few times. In, in 1 Kings 12.21, again, I'm not speculating. I'm getting it straight from your Bible. You can look this up and verify it. Don't believe me. Um, the, the Jews... Judah, it calls them Judah, that's because who they do, the Jews are, go to war against Israel. You read it. They went to war against each other. They warred against each other a lot. The Judah generally consisted of mainly the tribe of Benjamin and uh, the tribe of Judah, which is the Jews, and a few Levites, but the Levites were scattered throughout all the tribes, actually. And uh, the other ten tribes that are mainly are the ones that actually congregated and became Israel. Uh, to know who Israel is, though, if they're not the Jews, who are they? You have to go back even further back in the Bible, back to Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 48 and uh, verse 9. It tells you a story about Joseph's two sons. Now, remember Jacob, whose name God changed to Israel. He was Israel. He had uh, 12 sons. 
uh, later to become the 12 tribes of Israel. One of them was Judah, who became the Jews. And they were given a special blessing by, they were given a special blessing by God. They would always have the scepter. They would always, the Jews would always be the ones who would be the ones uh, ruling over the Israel and Judah. So that was their blessing. And of course, the biggest king of kings and lord of lords, Jesus Christ, is a Jew. So he's the biggest king of all. Uh, king David was, etc. Um, but anyhow, uh, one of uh, one of uh, Jacob's sons was Joseph, and Joseph had two sons of his own. Jacob thought he had lost Joseph forever, and when you read the whole story of Joseph, my favorite story in the Bible, incidentally, beautiful story. Um, when Israel finally seen Joseph again, his son again, he also God also allowed him to see his Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, he called them. Uh, and so he blessed those two sons. Actually, if you read it, Jacob, who became, became Israel, adopted Joseph's sons as his own. God gave them, actually gave his sons to, to Jacob. Uh, in order that he could properly bless him because he couldn't bless somebody unless it was his own sons and so and his firstborn so God gave Joseph's sons to him anyway technicality but just kind of important he blessed his Ephraim and Manasseh which was really unusual because usually he only blessed the eldest son he never blessed uh, both the eldest youngest whatever and so uh, Joseph actually was a bit opposed to that at first, but then he went on to explain that both of them were receiving a blessing, which is unusual. And they would, they would, they would receive, Joseph's son would receive the blessing of Israel, which means they're the ones who gain his name. The nations they went on to become will be called Israel, not Judas, not the Jews of Israel. You know, the Jews are descendants from Jacob, whose name was, became Israel. They are descendants from Israel, but they do not have the blessing or the rights to call themselves that. They do these days, but they, in the past, in the recent past, actually, they called themselves Judea, I believe. So, uh, it's only recently that they've been referred to as Israel because of people's misunderstanding. Which is understandable, I suppose, but it's led to some false ideas. But he gave them he, he, he gave them a blessing and he also pro gave them a prophecy about his two sons. Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, would be, go on to become two of the most powerful nations on earth. You know, is with that is that little Israel over there? No, it isn't. They're they're, they're definitely not well they're power militarily militarily Israel these days is quite powerful. They can they can hold their own, but they're not they don't qualify as what the prophecy says here, they will become two great nations, not one. Uh, and one of the nations, it says, in, it says, will become a company of nations, or, or a commonwealth, or a group of nations, as it also says in the NIV. Um, a commonwealth of nations. There will be many that will colonize, but all these colonies will become na their own nations, but they will all still stay allied together. Now, which nation in the history of the world has done that? And is still doing that to this day. And, and it's, but it's also got to be a superpower. But there's other quote things you need as well. Uh, Manasseh, Manasseh, his brother, would become another, also become a great powerful nation, which would be a brother nation, and related to this commonwealth. So it would be a big commonwealth of a group of nations, it's a superpower, and the biggest superpower the world ever known. And then another one, which is also a superpower, not quite as great as the, as the first one. Well, these days it is. Um, there's also some other things. Uh, in 1 Kings 9.5, King da it states that King David will always have somebody sitting on his throne right up until Christ returns. So whoever this Israel is, whoever these nations are, plural, they have to have a king or queen sitting on the throne right now that can trace their roots back to King David. Otherwise, God's a liar. We all know that's not true. I don't even like saying that even like this, you know, the bottom didn't even say that at all. God is not a liar. Uh, in Britain, a commonwealth of nations, the, the greatest power the, the world has ever seen, it's not as powerful these days, but once upon a time, Britain had a colony in every part of the world where the, they, they used to have a saying, the sun never sets on the British Empire. That literally was true. The sun, though somewhere in the world, was always the sun was always shining on a colony or nation of Britain. Anyway, the queen and kings of Britain has traced their descendants back to King David. Now, I've heard this from various sources. I was actually researching my own uh, genealogy, 
and I, uh, I actually accidentally found the direct the descendants from Queen Elizabeth right on back to King Harriman the second of um, Ireland and he married uh, Princess Teffy who was a direct relation to King David so they can trace their roots straight back to King David they already have they know that they are they know they have they are direct descendants and you can look it up look it up online you can find all the various proofs and everything it, it's not difficult to find if I can find it by accident anybody can find it <laughs> I wasn't even looking so so I'm not parroting what somebody else has said. I actually stumbled across this myself, or I'm thinking God probably helped guide me to it, so I have my own proof. I prefer to prove everything myself. I don't like believing everything I'm told. Everything I'm told. So the British Commonwealth and the United States, those two nations, are the only nations in the history of the world that match those prophecies. They are true Israel. The, and uh, all the English-speaking nations, all the all the colonies of Britain, the Commonwealth, the entire Commonwealth is Israel as well. They are Ephraim, and the United States is the son, uh, sons of Manasseh. Uh, Ephraim uh, includes Canada, Australia, New Zealand, there's South Africa there, uh, all over. Just Britain, Britain has colonized so much, it just buggles the mind. At one, one point they controlled India, and they had the Hong Kong, and everything, just everywhere. They were the most powerful nation the world has ever seen. The uh, United States is also powerful, but the United States has not achieved the same power that Britain once had. So that's prophecy came true, and the Bible also states that the descendants of this Abraham's descendants will become like the sand of the sea. That is not a little tiny nation of Israel over there. That is Israel, the true Israel, the United States, Britain, Commonwealth. Those are true Israel. And and the reason why that's important is because if you can't, the beast, the beast. Is not Israel, you know. It is not none of Israel is, is conquered by this beast power, and so none of the leaders or rulers, including Obama, is the beast or the Antichrist or anything of the sort. The beast is identified in the prophecies of Daniel. Uh, if you look into, uh, if you read the various uh, prophetic chapters in Daniel, which I have, uh, I think two, seven, nine, eleven, something like that, all them chapters of various prophecies, and all Bible scholars agree upon who, who they are. I got my own little thing here. It's called Collins Bible Guide. I bought it years ago. It's an inexpensive little thing. It just has notes on the Bible. And in Collins Bible Guide, it says about Daniel 7 to 12, it says the lion represents Babylon, the bear Medo-Persia, the leopard Greece, which later was later split into four divisions, and what other Alexander after Alexander the Great that is, you know, and the four the fourth beast is Rome, the Roman Empire, and there's just no no Bible scholar disagrees with it. It's not even a point of argument. So I don't know why anybody would disagree. Uh, when the educated people who study this stuff all agree, you know, and even if they have different theologies, they agree upon this, you know. Um, the final beast is the Roman Empire. That's several revivals that have a final revival. You know, did you know the, the European Union in its official documents, and I've seen a photocopy of the official documents. Again, I'm not parroting, I'm telling you what I read myself. I've seen the official documents at the top that they called themselves New Rome when they first formed. The revived Roman Empire. You know, just just incredible to me, you know. Uh, the official the official religion of the Roman Empire has been and still is the Roman Universal Church. Now the word universal is the word they used back then for universal was Catholic. That's why it's called the Roman Catholic Church. The word Catholic isn't a special word. There's things in the Bible, books in the Bible called the Catholic Epistles, which means they're the universal epistles. They don't belong to the Catholics, you know. So Roman Catholic means the Roman Universal Church. It's universal. They adopt it in all the various pagan religions of Rome under one roof, under one tradition, under one church, and then uh, Constantine called the Christian. And there's nothing Christian about it. It's, it's the exact opposite of God's true church. Um, their system of worship is the mark of this beast power. It is their system of worship. The mark of the beast is a system of worship. And the system of worship of the Roman Empire is the Roman Catholic Church and their, their whole system of worship. Their whole Sunday Sunday keeping, um, everything about it is exactly the opposite of what God's Word says. God's Word says that you're to obey God's laws. So they tell you, you don't no longer has to be to obey God's laws. And why do you think this Antichrist, he really isn't the Antichrist, because the Antichrist means somebody who's against Christ. The end time uh, person that comes isn't an Antichrist, he's called the lawless one. 
Uh, and it, isn't that ironic? You know, it's the Roman Catholic Church who teaches God's laws are done away. He is the lawless one. He's the one that teaches lawlessness. And as do all the other Sunday keeping churches. Um, but he's not the Antichrist, because Antichrist is somebody who's against Christ, and he doesn't, he's not against Christ. He claims to be Christ, which is false, of course. So that idea is wrong, and I think there's a good reason why Satan has influenced people to call him the Antichrist instead of the lawless one, because if you call him lawless one, then it's obvious it's because he doesn't obey God's laws. He doesn't obey God's holy days. God's holy days actually spells, shows out the, God's wonderful plan for humanity, if you really examine them. So that's covered up and replaced with pagan traditions, which are meaningless and, and foolishness, and these pagan traditions anger God. They're the exact opposite. God says to keep the Sabbath on the seventh day, so they keep it on the first day. Everything about that church is the opposite, contrary. It is the false church. And all of her daughters, called harlots in Revelation, are also false churches, all those that keep that Sunday system of worship. And God says he will pour out his plagues on them churches. That is a mark of the beast. If you're going to church on this Sunday and you're being accepting these things, you're willingly accepting the mark of the beast. Get out of those churches now while you've still got time because God promises plagues on everybody who continues to keep that and doesn't repent. For your own good. Work it up yourself. It's in there, you know. Uh... It's just, there's just so many false uh, false uh, prophecies out there these days, and it really detracts away from God's truths. You need to learn the truth. You need to learn who the mark really is, who the false prophet is. Isn't a chip in your skin or your forehead? Um, the, the whole thing in your palm of your hand, it has to do with what you do. Uh, and your forehead has to do with what you think. And there's even stuff in that in the, in the Old Testament to do with God's laws. That people, you should make them as frontlets on your forehead and in, and like uh, marks on your hand. In other words, and everything you do and everything you think. And it's the same thing with the mark of the beast. You accept it willingly. And what you do, you're doing things that have to do with it. It's nothing to do with the microchip in your skin because people were put to death during the apostles' days because of it. For, for not accepting it. So uh, it's a system of worship. You know, don't believe these false prophets. There are people out there that talk about a new world order. There's no new world order mentioned in the Bible. The whole world's going to be at war, killing each other off when Christ returns. His beast power is going to be invading countries. That's not a world new world order. That's a falsehood. There's coming new world order, but Jesus is going to be the one who's head of it. Satan wants you to believe he's going to have one. It's not true. It's a falsehood. It distracts you from learning the truth. That's why Satan's encouraging it, you know. And nothing about CERN. CERN is a particle uh, accelerator. It's not going to open. It's not going to open a, a portal to the nether world or something. It's just a particle accelerator. Get rid of that nonsense. If I see one more thing about CERN, I'm going to scream. I think. You know. Um, this is nothing but blood moons. You know, those are four lunar eclipses. The one blood moon is in, is, is in prophecy. It happens near the end of the tribulation, just before Christ's return. And this blood moon is so frightening an event, it causes some men to have heart attacks. People aren't going to have a heart attack over a lunar eclipse. The lunar eclipse is actually very beautiful things. And the four blood moons have happened seven times throughout history since Christ. So it's nothing new, and it can be predicted. And no man knows the end time. No man knows the day or the hour when Christ returns. Not even Jesus himself. You know, so uh, get that or get rid of those false things too. These are all false prophecies, false prophets as well, and they will pay. Everybody out there who's repeating this, these lies will pay. Prophets and teachers are held to a higher, stricter standard by God. And if you're out there and you're lying in the name of God, you are in deep trouble unless you repent. I tell you that right now. I don't hold back nothing. God tells me to warn people, I'm warning people. He tells me to tell the truth, to tell them. He tells me to correct and rebuke, I'm correcting and rebuking these things. I'm not sitting, I'm not out here to lovey dove and hug everybody to death. I want to save people. I don't want people to be destroyed and keep keep believing in these things and keeping these things and attending these false churches, then you are setting yourself up for destruction. What oh, kind of a loving person would I be if I allowed you to do that? I'm warning now out of love, not because I'm trying to be vindictive and miserable or whatever, like some people peck me as, but nobody else is out there warning. It doesn't feel like it anyway if they are. They're just teaching lies. Guard your mind against the deceptive false prophecies. Stick to the Word of God. And 
you, he will have mercy upon you, and maybe you can avoid some of these things coming, and maybe you can avoid some of the, I don't know, just watch yourselves and pray always that you would be, would be worthy to escape all these things that are coming. Have a good one. God bless.